Welcome all gamers to another CBBG video. You are here with your channel host Chris and I'm bringing you the third review of the SPG magazines. I have already reviewed the first issue as well as the second issue. If you haven't watched those videos already be sure to go and check those out and uh, hear my thoughts and opinions on those. Um, today we will be reviewing the third magazine which was uh, released officially today however it did uh, have a pre-release at the uh, desolation of Stockport 2016 over in you guessed it Stockport over in England uh, right by Manchester however um, while some people were lucky enough to um, get the uh, magazine at that event I was also very fortunate as I got this early so I have been able to read it and uh, so I could get this review ready for you guys for today on the re actual release date. Um, so I think we should just jump right into it. Um, as you'll see, the front cover looks absolutely amazing and as you can probably guess, if I can avoid the glare, um, is this is a Dol Guldur theme um, and uh, a lot of unique models have been created just for this issue which is absolutely amazing, and I'll be covering that very, very soon. Um, so right off the bat, I think uh, we open up and we see, of course, there's the uh, usual editorial that uh, the creators Damien and Tom have written, um, and uh, they explain a little bit about how the, um, the entire magazine came about, uh, how it was slightly delayed, um, how they think it was worth it, of course, um, spoiler alert, so do I, and um, in total of this issue took 17 months to produce. And mind you, this was released uh, just about a year after the second issue, which means they have been overlapping and creating the second issue and the third issue simultaneously. Now, very interestingly as well, in the editorial, they also write that this is actually um, part one uh, of a Dol Guldur theme, excuse me, um, and the second part, uh, meaning SBG issue 4, will be released in the summer of 2016, which is tremendously exciting. I cannot wait to uh, read the second part to this uh, theme, simply because there was, as they write, so much content that they wanted to fit into uh, this glorious magazine. However, there was not enough space, as they are limited to... 45 pages plus the front and back cover. Um, and then of course you have the usual table of contents. Um, the reason to go about that a little bit, um, not too much because um, I will be going over the content right now. Uh, so the first article is a new one. Uh, they call SBG Towers. Um, that has kind of become the uh, the nickname for uh, for the duo that is Damien and Tom. They call themselves the SBG Towers, and I suppose now the community has started to as well. Um, and the SBG Towers uh, basically give you some fun facts um, about stuff that happened while creating this magazine. And um, that involves uh, the duo going to, uh, to Nova over in the States, how that was exciting. Um, they give some, uh, some numbers about issue three, like, uh, just for an instance, uh, there are 21,063 words in the magazine, uh, which comes uh, just short of issue 2, which had about 22,000 words in it. Also, they took 787 photos uh, for the magazine. However, they had to, had to cut that down to 133. Still, 133 pages, I'm um, sorry, photos in, uh, in 46 pages is still a lot of photos. And... Um, I'll show some of them to you guys without being uh, too spoiler-rific, um, so you can see um, the great photos that they decided to put in this magazine. Also, uh, which I am completely over the moon uh, about, probably the, my favorite bit about this entire magazine is, of course, uh, that Damien and Tom were very, very kind to mention uh, my name somewhere. Let's see if I can get it up here. Uh, right here, where they simply just thank me for some uh, unseen um, contribution which I made to the magazine. Um, so thank you, Damien and Tom, if you are watching. Um, it was very, very kind of you to uh, to write that little note in the magazine. I, uh, I got a kick out of that. That was amazing. Um, so the first, um, so to speak, 
actual article, uh, don't get me wrong, but but yeah, actual article, is written by James Baldwin, and uh, James Baldwin is um, a lover of Tolkien, which is also very apparent in his style of writing, um, which is very, um, there's a lot of references and a lot of uh, descriptions that Tolkien have used as well, that he uh, uses in his article uh, as a way of describing different things. Now he has written an, an article called Over Hill and Under Hill, and he describes his, um, so to speak, his hesitation and nervousness at first about actually going out and taking part in a, um, a tournament for the first time, as he was more interested in the hobby aspect of, um, of SVG. Um, so he would usually stay at home, he would collect the minis, he would paint them, and he would uh, perhaps do some conversions and then do all that. However, um, he would actually not um, play much and he wouldn't go to actual tournaments. And he has written a, gosh, it's actually pretty long, um, three pages, three full pages um, with photos, of course, um, about how it, what it was like to go uh, to his first tournament. And um, judging from his um, his writings, he um, he got a kick out of it and he started loving it, and I hope that will be the same for me when I attend my first real tournament in eons uh, later this year in August. Um, so if this is all holds up and this is all true, I could not be more excited about going to a uh, tournament, and I think if you haven't gone to a tournament either, um, reading this article will put no doubt in your mind that you will uh, want to go to a tournament. Um, this is a great written article and um, it was a real enjoyment to read. Next up we have um, the second part of Tom's top 10 of under-costed heroes. Um, part 1 was in issue 2 and this concludes the whole Tom's top 10. I assume that it was only going to be three parts. So you had under-pointed warriors in issue 1, you had under-costed uh, heroes uh, part one in issue two, and now you have part two, um, and this one is much uh, is focusing on uh, heroes that have three in all the right places, so to speak. So uh, three attacks and three wounds, um, and I assume um, actually I don't remember him actually talking much about the uh, might, will, and fate, um, but at least three attacks and three wounds, and um, he goes about uh, goes over some of the heroes and. Um, Spoiler alert, some evil heroes have actually made it into the top 10. Now, where they are ranking in the top 10, I will not tell you. You're going to have to go and get the magazine yourself to find out. Um, it's a great read, and um, I think some of the expected heroes um, with three attacks and three wounds are in the top 10, as, um, as you know, the community has kind of judged them as being um, a little bit too effective, maybe, uh, having too great a stand line for their points cost. Um, but um, it is a great read, and, um, well, certainly looking at the top 10, I might now consider actually getting some of the heroes if they are really um, worth the points. Um, so a great um, read. Now, also, just as in the uh, the other two articles that Tom did for, uh, for issue 1 and issue 2, he also make sure to, to underline and, and make it very clear that this is no exact science. There's no science behind this. This is his own formula um, that he has used to create um, these um, estimations of uh, their point values and whether or not they are under cost or not. So no exact science. However, it is a great guideline to, um, to how, you, uh, how much each uh, of those heroes should cost. Also, uh, we go on to the next um, the next article called The Siege of Dol Guldur. Um, now, this will not be the Siege of Dol Guldur that you know from the third Hobbit film. This is, as um, Damien and Tom has written, is based on an idea, a vision that Peter Jackson had back when The Hobbit was just supposed to be two films and not three. This was supposed to be a very Helm's Deep uh, inspired, I suppose scene in uh, in the film and so it was supposed to be much um, much larger feature a lot more characters um, and then feature a lot more um, warriors as well and um, so it's supposed to be a lot larger uh, in scale and um, so this is a so to speak 
what if uh, scenario, which actually was also shortly mentioned in a little uh, block of text in issue two, I think it was. Um, when, yeah, wasn't it in the article Fluff and Furry? I think, a Fluff and Furry, I think it was in there. Um, this one, uh, this article, um, custom scenario, sorry, features um, five, yeah, five um, good heroes, um, as well as some uh, warriors. So that can't be right, not five, I must be completely wrong. Two, three, four, five, six, seven and a generic captain. So eight heroes in total, and a, oh wow, actually, um, you never realize this when actually reading it, I suppose. Um, it's actually uh, 34 uh, warriors for the good side. And of course, on the evil side, you will also have um, a lot of uh, characters. You will, of course, as you guessed, with the, the Dol Guldur theme that we do have in this issue, you will be needing the Necromancer, as well as the Nine Ring Wraiths. And, of course, just like the Good Force has some troops, so does Evil. And they have also created a very, very beautiful, beautiful custom map of how Dol Guldur looks in this, um, in this, well, what will be a battle report, um, but in this custom scenario. And those two pages, stunningly as look, and they have a lot of information, with great photos and whatnot, you have another full two pages here of special rules. Whoops, special rules right there. There's a lot to read and it's a lot to learn and it's a lot to understand. However, I think they came up with some really, really, and I gotta say it again, really cool rules for this scenario. And um, it, very much so takes inspiration from the film uh, about how the events uh, went, how they progressed and how they happened in the film. And I think just from this scenario, if you could somehow, you know, turn that into a film, that would be absolutely amazing. I think this would make for uh, for great, um, a great scene uh, or even a great battle, many scenes in a, uh, in a film. So, you know, that's pretty cool that you can actually envision this as a film just from reading rules. I think this is awesome. Um, next we go into the next article, written by a uh, double winner, or two times winner I should say, Ed Bull. Uh, he has won the Great British uh, Hobbit League twice with his um, infamous or famous, that's up to you, uh, list of uh, not schools on ring rates. However, this is only touching about uh, on some of the ring rates, only six no felt beast. That was a requirement from Damien and Tom's uh, side when they asked Ed to write this article. So no felt beast. Only the uh, only the Nazguls, Only the ring rates. And um, he has uh, focused on six, and because there are three that have been left out, and he uh, very funnily describes why those three were the ones that were left out. Um, it's a great read and it's a great way to understand how you should play each of these, um, well, six uh, ring of rings, as well as those three that have been left out, because each of them does get a short line, a short comment on what is their purpose in the game, basically. Um, this also has some uh, really cool photos. Um, you can take that photo, for example. Whoops, let's try to do this properly, Christian. Uh, there we go. So see that's so like, you have Radagast down at the bottom, and you have a... Uh, what are it called? Twilight Ringwraith, that's what it's called. Twilight Ringwraith uh, creeping over the um, the statue there, taken straight out of the film, which is awesome. And also I gotta show you this photo right here. This is amazing, look at that. Galadriel there in the center, surrounded by all nine Ringwraiths. That looks awesome and it's taken straight out of the film. It looks gorgeous. And um, yeah, so Ed goes over all these Ringwraiths. And uh, as I said, Talks about the purpose in the game, what are they good for, what is their weaknesses, which is um, absolutely amazing. And he basically um, turns, puts them into different categories of um, what the uh, what their purpose is in the game. So you kind of get you know put them in boxes, so to speak. So it, it's clearly illustrated what these um, ring of ways are good for and what they should be used for. Then we go into a battle report. Um, and that is, of course, um, using the custom scenario that I showed you before, um, the Siege of Kotol Guldur. 
And that's basically that played out. And oh my god. Holy gosh. This is absolutely amazing. And you even, uh, there's so much to talk about here, really. But I will try to keep it down a little bit just because I think you should have some of the enjoyment of the surprises of uh, this amazing uh, well, game as was featuring all the Nine Ring Rays, the Necromancer, and all the good heroes that I mentioned before um, in this extremely large and custom uh, board, which I'll show you there. Holy gosh, that's amazing. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's crazy that they actually had this made, this entire board just for this magazine. Now, this board was also shown at Desolation of Stockport 2016, and I can, uh, I wish I had been there just to see this. This was amazing. Um, now they go over, um, they play for a long time, it seems. It must have taken ages to go over this. Um, it, it, I think it is it 18 turns it goes on for, I think? Was it 18? 16. 16 turns is the game, which is a lot. You, every player, uh, every player of this game knows that 16 turns is a long game, and you have a lot of models to move, you have a lot of uh, tactics to follow, so this was a long game, and you can sense that, but not in the sense that you lose enjoyment during the game, it's still fun, it seems, and there's a lot of twists and turns that really um, makes this game uh, so much more enticing to read, because it's not just, you know, it's not decided just at the beginning who is going to win this entire thing. It's actually, um, it goes back and forth, and then there's a lot of stuff happening constantly, which is um, awesome. And of course, you get a lot of really, really cool photos. Um, it is, <clears throat> it seems like Damien and Tom have really upgraded their, um, so to speak, focus on getting some really great pictures into this magazine, uh, considering the involvement. Um, the involvement that was from issue one to issue two, and now from issue two to issue three, they have been using a photographer, a professional photographer, both for issue two and three. However, it just seems like the quality in issue three is higher for some reason than in issue two, which is um, really interesting. But you can see the complete mayhem that's actually rocking this entire game, and. Um, I'm almost considering if I should show you this uh, this picture, but I uh, just because it's so cool. But I think you should have it. Uh, you should see it for yourself when you open up the uh, the magazine. If you look at page twenty in the magazine, once you actually go and get it, get it yourself, you'll know what cool photo I'm talking about. Um, so after this amazing battle report, um, which has, like I'm still stunned about all these uh, really cool photos showing all the different models that were created for this um, this magazine including um, the great Matt Davis he uh, who also goes by the name generation uh, generation shift um, online he has an, his own YouTube channel uh, which you should go and check out and um, he has created custom these nine ring rates um, and you can see those there so he has actually created nine ring rates which look beyond stunning. Stunning doesn't even serve it justice. Um, it's absolutely brilliant, magnificent. Uh, it's beautiful what he has been able to do and um, he, well for eight of them he took and um, he took already created models and basically just converted them. That's not even fair. He took them as a base and then re-sculpted them into something else. <clears throat> However, one of them has been um, completely created from the um, from the ground up, which is the Tainted. The Tainted has no base model. He sculpted that on his very own. And I'm, I gotta say, I almost think that is my favorite of all nine. You can see it there. That's the Tainted. If you don't think that's amazing, I don't know what, what will be. It is stunning. <clears throat> what he has come up with and um, yeah he spent three pages on uh, describing how he came up with it and then how he did it and then what was the you know the key point so to speak in um, in this um, after this brilliant article we go into 
the creation of another character because a custom necromancer was also created for this magazine. Now, again, um, just like in issue one and issue two, Damien and Tom have um, hooked up, so to speak, with... This came out wrong. They have um, partnered, I should say, with uh, Shadow and Flame, uh, who creates models and also paint them. They have a paint and sculpt service. And um, now we have Dave, uh, Dave Fredericks, who have created this beautiful necromancer model, really showing off how the, uh, or just taken out straight out of the movie, how you have uh, the necromancer in the third Hobbit film, how he has all that, uh, so to speak, ghostly, um, should we say, I don't know what to call it. Here, I'm going to show you, look at that. See that, kind of ghostly, um, it's not tentacles because it's, I don't know what you call, what you would call it basically. Um, ten tendrils, so this is what's written in here amongst other things. Um, but it is some kind of smoky, ghostly um, air, I should, gas, I don't know. Um, but it is a stunning model, which you can also see during the battle report. It is a lot of um, hard work has really gone into creating it, but also painting it, and it's it's amazing what these guys can come up with. I am beyond words. I would never be able to um, come up with any of this stuff myself. Um, not even imagine it. Now, after Dave did a, st a stunning job on creating the Necromancer, um, <laughs> Tom and Damien asked them ask him if he could do a. Um, you know, a display base for this cool model, um, just to push him a little bit further. And Dave took it uh, even farther than Damien and Tom and I think any reader could really have imagined. When you think of a custom uh, display base, you may imagine, you know, something about yay size. Um, just, you know, something smallish, just to give it a little bit of feel instead of just having the small oval base. Um, this, what they, what he came up with is basically and a, a board uh, you could play battles on in the zone. Look at that. It is insanely large. Now you know the Necromancer is a large model. You have that right there. That's a Necromancer. This is a display piece. This is display base just for one model. That's insane. I wish I had that in my home. It looks so cool. So yeah, there's a, just a one page devoted to just showing off that display um, display base. Um, now, going into um, the next piece is um, how Saruman was painted um, by the other half of the duo, um, Kev Lawrence. And um, that basically is it. You then go into the hobby block. Um, not block, as this is of course written, um, where you have Damien Tom, Barry O'Neill, who created the entire scenery um, for the battle report, and uh, you have Matt, um, as well as Dave and Kev, who I've already mentioned, and um, they basically des describe what they are uh, up to at the time of just before releasing this magazine, I suppose it was. And then something very exciting, is of course the um, as for every issue there is a um, a raffle where you can donate um, two pounds and then you get a raffle ticket and um, if you're the lucky winner you will this time around win the Vanquishers of the Necromancer clan pack I think it is technically um, however I suggest go out and get the magazine get the magazine and you will already have not just one ticket but I think you'll have at least five tickets in the raffle depending on your location as um, as the prize will of course increase with postage um, as it has to um, cross the waters from England. Now this competition will run until the 31st of August 2016 so you have quite some quite a few uh, few months to um, to get into this um, um, get into this raffle if you are interested in winning the Vanquish of the Necromancer box set or clan pack as I think it is. Um, now, the, uh, the, the Vanquish of the Necromancer was donated by, um, by the uh, company Awkward Battles run by JT 
and he also has an advert on the back of um, of the FPG magazine <coughs> for a uh, a tournament that is being held at Aqua Battles it, on Saturday, July second, and Sunday, July third, two thousand sixteen. Um, it is a fifty percent tournament, uh, fifty pound, sorry, fifty pound tournament. So it costs fifty pounds to attend. Um, however. Just remember, you also, if you attend, you also get 25% discount on Games Workshop products um, for the rest of the year. So for half year, you get 25% off all purchases at Aqua Battles. At least that is how I uh, read this. It is a two-day camping adventure, uh, which will be hailed in the acres of a privately booked land. So you bring your own tent and you basically camp out and you play with your minis and you have an awesome time. If I was able to go, I would. Unfortunately, I am occupied. I am traveling at the uh, on those days. Um, I am already booked for another holiday. I can't uh, attend, unfortunately. But I advise anybody reading this um, that you should go to this. And also, there is a quick code um, for when ordering. Um, however, um, so you so sorry when you order, you can uh, win some custom dice. Um, get the magazine and you will get that code. Um, and that's SB SBG issue 3. I think this is, um, I think this is my third, uh, yes, it is my third magazine. No, it's my favorite of the three magazines. Um, which says a lot when you think about it because, oh my gosh, SB SBG issue 1, um, was a very, very pleasant surprise. You didn't know what to expect when it first came out, um, as the guys, Damien and Tom, had never created a magazine before actually creating this, and that never showed. And when they announced they were going to make uh, issue two, I was um, so insanely thrilled, and especially the upgrade of, um, of the photos, that they have become at a much higher resolution, um, and actually professional photography really, really increased the, um, well, both the, the, um, qu the quality, it increased the quality of, uh, of the magazine, and um, it made it, it was still an enjoyment to read the first issue, but this just became much better. However, there are some articles in SBG issue one that I would never have been without, so I love both of those magazines. Um, However, I am much more interested in the Dol Guldur theme than I am personally in the um, Asar Hunters and the Battle of Azanulbazar. So I think this has to be my favorite magazine of the three. However, uh, my favorite piece, my favorite article from issue one and issue two, uh, which was the Doctor's Corner, is missing from this magazine. Um, which I was sad to see. Um, I have been warned from Damien that the article would be missing from the magazine. However, um, despite my favorite article from the other two issues missing, this is my favorite magazine. If you haven't gotten any of these three amazing magazines yet, um, I suggest that you go and get them. Um, issue, whoops, issue three, which just released today, May 9th, um, and I believe that Dom and, uh, Tom and Damien still have a few issues left of issue one and two. So, if you haven't already, go get these great magazines and um, just for fun, let them know that you uh, watched my review and that's what made you go and purchase uh, their magazine. I am not sponsored by them. Um, I am simply just a fan of their work and I love reading these magazines. I have read uh, issue one and two numerous times already and I know for sure that this will not be the only time that I read issue 3 um, and it is a great just to have um, just to sit and read the magazine uh, as opposed of having it digitally because the issue 3 will be available on a digital release later this year however as as far as to my knowledge no official date has been announced as of yet uh, but it will become uh, come out as a free PDF at uh, some point later this year. Um, but support the guys. Go get the physical copy. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of money to actually create this magazine. Show them support and actually go get the physical magazine. Um, it will it will make their time much more worthwhile uh, creating these magazines. 
So I think that's it for my uh, three-day uh, review of SBG. I hope you enjoyed the videos. If you did, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, if there's anything you felt I didn't do justice, anything I didn't talk about enough, um, let me know. Um, but if you did like it, um, then actually like the video. Um, put that like, uh, push that like button so I know that you watched it and you enjoyed it. And um, we do a lot of cool videos, generally speaking, on this channel. So if you enjoyed these three videos, go have a uh, look at the other videos we make. We come up with great um, battle reports. And uh, if you continuously like what we do, click the subscribe button. And um, if you particularly liked this video, please do share it with your other uh, SBG players um, so they can see the review as well. So in short, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. Support your hobby to hobby and happy strategy battle gaming.